There's something I kept forgetting to say. I actually skipped the verse. I think it's 25, verse 25, that um, remember they were asking, am I not the one, am I the one, and all that, that type of a question. Um, Judas actually said it. Was that verse 25? Yes. Uh, it says, then Judas, the one who betrayed him, he actually was, I think, the last one who was sitting right by Jesus in the Last Supper. And he said, surely not I. It's not I, is it, Lord? And Jesus said, it is. Yes, it is you. Or uh, you yourself have said it. You know, so I forgot to mention that even Judas said it. But by the way, it's interesting. Another thing that's interesting about that is that <clears throat> uh, they said, Lord, he said, Rabbi or Master. He, he kind of changed it. So he didn't see him, I don't think, as the Lord. Um, but anyway, um, this is the ending part where after the supper, this communion time, um, and they sung a hymn. <clears throat> it's not exactly for certain the order of this, but I think... Um, Jesus probably uh, did this twice. He talked about one of them um, or all of them being offended at him. Just, you know, how Judas was the betrayer, the traitor. And at the end of the evening, I, by the way, I think I was wrong on something. It actually says in Luke chapter uh, 22, uh, I think it's verse 20 or something, that Judas, I think he went through the whole Last Supper. I just happened to read that uh, verse uh, digging deeper into this, and he uh, he was actually there when he gave the bread, uh, breaking the bread and all that. I think he was there the whole time until the really end. Somewhere in there he left, and we'll get into that in John chapter 13. So Judas was actually there, and he partook of the supper. He ate of the Paschal lamb, and then after supper, the third cup, and this is what it says in Luke, that at, at, he took the cup and he blessed it, you know, gave thanks again. And, uh, and, and that's when he uh, mention, it mentions that the hand that is betraying me is, is with me. So he's actually still there through the whole time, which is interesting. I don't know exactly what time he left, but I think Luke indicates that he was there. Um, and by the way, there's a lot more to this one evening that I haven't even mentioned. John 13 goes in, in John 13, 14, 15, 16. Um, wow, there's a whole lot right there. Even in 17, the, the Lord's Prayer, where Jesus did a whole chapter uh, that was a recorded prayer that they uh, wrote down about his praying. That's also in this evening at the supper. And he gave this, we'll call it a goodbye speech, a farewell speech. Deep and wonderful. We'll get into that, John. That'll take a long time. It's rich meat and that really good stuff. But near the end of this, before he left, because if you read in Matthew and... I think it's in Luke, um, that he was here when in, the, uh, in this upper room uh, when he told about them uh, uh, leaving him. And this is what it says. He says, um, I think he actually, actually in Matthew, he sung a hymn and left. And then it says he did this. But I think sometimes they didn't care about the order. They're just writing it and say, oh yeah, this happened. Oh yeah, this happened. And it's not exact order. So I think uh, that if you really put it together, he may have said this twice, maybe while they were talking and as they were leaving and on the way. I think Peter got so upset. He was upset. And Marcus says he's with vehement. You know, he's really passionate about this. I'm not going to deny you. or I'm not going to say I disown you and all that. He really said it. I think it's twice, personally, if you read it carefully. I think it might have been, or just an ongoing conversation. Uh, but this is what he said. Then Jesus told them, this very night you will all fall away. So Jesus tells all these guys here. Um, and at that point, I think Judas may have left. Doesn't really say. Um, you were all stumble, fall away. You're going to depart. You know, it's like an apostasy, a big word there. Um, on account of me, because of me. And he's, he's warning them and all. And can you imagine what that's like? Okay, you're all going to just turn your back on me. All of you are going to forsake me. You're going to leave. Bye. You're going to do that to me. You're going to say goodbye to me. That's what happened. <laughs> uh, not long from now, in the next hour or two, it actually happened. So this is probably 9 or 10 o'clock at night he's saying this. And so they're all like, <laughs> what? Especially Peter. I don't think he heard too much probably of the words after that too much. He was like, he kept thinking about, what? I'm, I'm not going to fall away. And, it, and just his heart swole 
got swollen, like swelled up. And uh, pr what a precious guy. But he will see that he said, oh, that's not going to happen with me. I'm not going to do it. He's uh, disagreeing with Jesus. Again, do you remember in, in, in Matthew where in Matthew 16, he says, um, it's not going to be so Jesus, you're not going to die and all that. He was rejecting that, you know, so poor, poor Peter. He was going in his own confidence and strength. His heart was right, though. His heart was like, oh, I, I'm not going to do this. And I've had that. And yet we fail. This is such a great passage because it gives you a sense that you can fail and God won't leave you. Just goodbye. Jesus shows, even in this passage, that he's not going to forsake them even though they forsook him. All right, so this is good. Jesus, it says, uh, told them, uh, this very night you will fall away on account of me, because of me. And what, what happened was... They, they saw these soldiers pretty soon. The story's going to come up. They saw these soldiers uh, and taking him, and they think it's all going down, and they got afraid, and they thought, they're going to get us next, but they doubted Jesus. They flat doubted him, every single one of them, even John and Peter. Now, later, he, J Peter comes closer and, and all up there, but he still forsook him, and he even denies him, which he tells right here in this passage. Um, so it's after the hymn probably, um, or maybe it was before, it's not exactly in order. Um, and that hymn, remember, was that Psalm 113 to uh, 118, which is Hallel. And by the way, the very first word of Psalm 113 is Halle, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. So that's why it's called the Hallel. And, uh, and they chanted it or they sung it. Well, they actually sung it here, but maybe it was a kind of a chant. Anyway, he says, this very night you will fall away on account of me, for it is written. Now he quotes uh, Zechariah chapter 13, verse 7. He says, he, he, Matthew quite quotes the Old Testament over and over, if you remember. And Zechariah was a very, very popular passage. And Jesus is right in there, in the hidden pages, secret pages. It's not secret pages, it's here. But there he is, all over the place in Zechariah. He says, I will strike the shepherd. Now, in the, if you actually look up that passage, uh, Zechariah 13, 7, um, it says, strike the shepherd. But here, uh, it's saying, I will strike the shepherd. And God's the one who's doing this. Jesus Christ is the shepherd, and God the Father is the one who strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. Or it could be the feeling of... Um, I think it's a direct prophecy of what Zechariah is telling what's going to happen to Jesus. But even if it wasn't, you know, a shepherd is down and the sheep are scattered. Uh, if, if, if she, sheep go different places. They're scattered. They're not, they don't know where they're going, going. They need the guidance of the shepherd. We need a shepherd, Jesus. Sheep needs a shepherd to, to direct them. Without a shepherd, they're going to be lost. It says, I will strike the shepherd. The sheep of the flock shall be scattered. Um, then he says, this is so fantastic, um, he's already warning them that this is all going to happen. Can you feel that, what it was like? Can you think about what it was like for these precious apostles who are trying to follow him? Like, it's like a roller coaster of like feelings and emotions. They were warm, they, they had probably some good times in that Passover, a lot of discussion. It was a long night. Uh, he washes their feet, by the way, earlier, I believe, before the supper. Some say it is during the supper, but anyway, we'll get into that when we get into John. Just a big night, a lot of things going on. And it was kind of, he says, that someone's going to betray me. That just, you know, like a bomb went down. And now, and they had some warmth and feelings, and he says all these sweet things to him and wonderful things. And then he says, okay, y'all going to fall away from me. <laughs> kind of like what well, not like what Judas did. Judas deliberately and voluntarily chose to betray Jesus and to trick uh, the group, put this facade on this, this fronting of mask where he acted like he loved Jesus and all that. It says, uh, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. And the flock is, is this, this, these apostles. But after I have risen, wow, boom, so here's another place where he's saying, I'm raising from the dead. He's reminding them. And I think it's very clear that all these predictions, you're going to be, uh, there's someone going to betray me. They find out who it was later. 
uh, they, the, the, you guys are going to fall away, you're going to scatter, and they did. They went in different directions in the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, and then I'm going to rise again. He said that over and over, if you remember, over the, over the last three years, and especially a year and a half. And here he is um, telling them again because he's help, trying to prepare them in some way to be prepared for all this. And then he's going to say, he's saying that I'm raising from the dead, like it's not over. Um, so it seemed like it was over when they, Jesus died on a tree, he's dead, he died on a cross, piece of wood, boom. And yet he says, but when I rise again, he said, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. And that's exactly what happened. He actually appears in the resurrection in Jerusalem first to them. Then he said, I'm going to go ahead of you. Well, what does a shepherd do? Maybe it's kind of a connection with what he just said. Shepherd lead. They don't drive the sheep. A good shepherd leads them um, where to go, and he's going to go ahead of them. But even if it wasn't uh, about the shepherd thing, he actually is predicting that I'm going to go ahead of you, and that's exactly what happened. Later you'll see that after they le left Judea, Judea and Jerusalem, they're going back to their old houses where they were. Jesus meets them there again after the resurrection. He says, I'm going to be there before you get there. <laughs> I love that. Jesus is so awesome. Then he says, um, I tell you the truth, uh, this very night before, oh, first I got to do this. I will go ahead of you in a Galilee. Peter replied. He's still thinking about this. He's not thinking about this resurrection that he's just talking about going in, in front of Galilee. Even if all fall away, even if everybody's offended in you, like they reject you and they disown you and all, he says, I will not. He says, even if I'll fall away, away of account of you, I would never will. Like a really strong me, I will not do it. By the way, he's like saying, even if all these guys, or all, any, if any of you, and when Jesus said earlier, all, um, it, it really does say all fall away, like everybody's going to fall away. Well, he says, even if all fall away, I'm not going to, I never will. Very strong uh, words here in the Greek. And Jesus said, I'll tell you the truth. He's like, well, Peter, I'm going to tell you the truth here. He said, this very night, <laughs> like soon, because it's already night, it's late. This very night, before the rooster crows. So uh, here it is, before the rooster. <laughs> or whatever, you know, before the rooster crows, uh, you're going to deny me three times. Now, Mark actually is the only one that says he, he, he actually, ah, twice. So there's one main one that they're talking about. Before the rooster crows, like before the cock crowing, cock is another word for rooster, before the crowing part before dawn happens. And by the way, in Palestine, in Israel, uh, roosters typically do crow early in the morning like that, 12.30, 1.30, 2.30. And that's between, and by the way, the Roman soldiers and all that, the guards and all that, between 12 and 3 is a night watch of Romans, and they actually called it um, the rooster crowing time, the cock crow, crowing time. So that's pretty cool. So we've got two animals right here mentioned. We have sheep, and then we have uh, roosters. I love how Jesus uses different, uh, different like animals and different creations of God for illustrations. But this is no illustration. It actually happened. Jesus answered, this very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me. He's not going to just say, "Why?" Well, he says, I don't know him. Like He acts like he literally doesn't know Jesus three times. And after the third time, the, the second uh, call of the rooster, ah, 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 you know, actually in Mark, it explains it in more detail. One time he, he denies him. Then you hear the, the rooster. Then he denies him two more times, and then you hear it again. And that's the main one that I, Matthew is really pointing out to uh, his, uh, his rightness and what Jesus is pointing out there. But Peter declared, even if I have to die, he's still arguing with Jesus. Don't argue with Jesus. Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. He's really strong here in what he's saying. He passionately says it. And all the others are thinking, well, look at him. Look at, yeah, well, us too. You know, and they protest too, and they argue their case. And again, I think it may have happened, uh, and I think it really did happen during this time, and then afterwards it was brought up again. Uh, and there's more details as you get in Luke, Luke's Gospel, I think is chapter 22, 
um, where Jesus actually says, Simon, you know, um, Satan has tried to sift you like weed and I've prayed for you and, you know, and he talks about his faith not failing and then, uh, and then when you're converted, when you change, go establish and strengthen the disciples. Really cool stuff. So this is all really super, super good stuff. Um, we have uh, something in life called like roller coastering. <laughs> this is kind of our lives a lot of times. Uh, we're doing well, and then we go down here, we slip, we fail, and then we go up here, and then we go down here, and, there, and sometimes we go way down. This is a point where Peter and his life went really deep down into a very depressing, dark place in his life where he literally disowned Jesus. And he even predicted it. And then sometimes it's not that big of a dip. You know, there's ups and downs in life all the time, kind of like a big roller coaster. And so what is so cool about this is Jesus knew all this was going to happen. Like God revealed it to him as a human being. As a human being, he didn't know anything. But Jesus Christ was empowered by the Spirit of God. And because he's divine, he had full access completely. And that he knew uh, that Peter was going to go through this. He knew all those guys were going to do it. And what's so precious about this, he knew it and he still chose them. He knew it and he still didn't turn his back on them, though they turned their back on him. So isn't that wonderful? Like Jesus is very patient. God is very patient. And he, if you fail, you know, you go into one of these dips here. He knew it. He knew it. And if you're a Christian, he knew it, that you're going to fail a lot of times. And yet he chose you anyway. And he knows what you're going to go through. And then he got strengthened. You know, Peter got really strong after this whole incident later. And, uh, and then it says, uh, God, he says, go before you. He's going to go before you, uh, which shows that he didn't give up on them. Uh, he did not give up and you shouldn't give up either. He doesn't give up on you. He's got a big heart for you. And so please don't give up on him as well. And then all ends well. That's another good thing in this whole story. Uh, all these sad and depressing things that Jesus is predicting was really a roller coaster emotionally, like I said. And so it's really hard uh, uh, that was happening. And Jesus himself, you know, he felt very much pain and, and grief and having to say this and knowing that they're going to turn it back. And yet he stuck with them. He didn't say, I forget you all. He could have just gotten out of here and went back to heaven, but he didn't. And that's what he wants to do. He, he wants to come into your life and stay right with you. He'll stick with you and, and he'll be there as a friend and as, your, as a brother and as a savior and as a deliverer. And so you could trust Jesus through all these times. This is so beautiful, these stories. So much told here. And by the way, one of the reasons I believe it's true is because this is very embarrassing for these apostles. And my life, I have many embarrassing moments, but this is very embarrassing, and yet they still wrote it down. If it wasn't true, they would try and hide all this bad stuff and show what type of failures are uh, they were. But, you know, they, they wrote it down and they, they told the truth. Mark wrote about the two uh, rooster crows, you know, and it's very much true that in tradition, it says that the guy wrote uh, that Peter gave the mess the the um, gospel he wrote he told Mark all about this so he knew the details and so it's so cool that all this happened and it's so wonderful that Jesus still went to the cross he his face was just determined to get on that cross for you and I he knew he was going to be rejected by his best buddies he, he's going to lose and be, feel deep rejection here of his friends um, basically they failed him royally he was left alone. And so you're going to feel that in life too. You're going to go through times where people reject you, even your best friends and people, even maybe in your family and relatives and who knows. But Jesus will stay there with you. Amen. Well, there you go. That's a great story. And we move on. We're getting closer and closer to that big time event, the cross of Jesus coming up. Not yet. It'll be a while. Thanks for listening.